When I reviewed this OneTech EPS1602 power supply a few weeks ago, I mentioned that the heatsink it was using might not be adequate when the power consumption is high. Well, guess what happened? I was using this power supply the other day to test out another switching power supply, and I think I was setting the output voltage to around 150 volts, and it was outputting around 2 amps. I left it running for maybe 10 minutes, while I went upstairs to get a cup of coffee. After returning, I found the power supply turned off, and I wasn't able to turn it back on again. Upon further investigation, it became apparent that something catastrophic had happened, as the fuse was blown. So here I am, I just opened up the power supply again, and let's see what went wrong. I've got a feeling it's most likely the switching MOSFETs, as those are the ones mounted on the tiny heatsink, and if stressed beyond their safe operating envelope, especially when the heat dissipation is not adequate, they will most likely fail. So let's actually take a look. And yep, this one is shorted between the drain and source. How about the other MOSFET? Yeah, you can see that both are shot. So I'll have to replace them. Hopefully these MOSFETs didn't bring anything else down with them, and are the only things that failed. I don't know for sure, but we'll have to replace them first anyway. And to do that, I first need to desolder these MOSFETs from the circuit board. Let me actually remove the heatsink first. I think there are only a couple of screws holding it down. Wow, you can see that the tiny heatsink is actually responsible for both the MOSFETs and the shocky diode. Since the heatsink is just pressed on, the surface contact with the heatsink may not be that great, especially if these power devices are not mounted evenly. Let me remove these MOSFETs with my cheap desoldering iron that I bought not too long ago. And by the way, I've done a review of this desoldering iron, and if you're interested, you can check out my review video, which I will provide the link down below. You can see it's actually working pretty well. Sometimes you have to try a couple of times, and the key is to create a seal around the through hole so you have sufficient suction. Anyway, as you can see here, I had removed these two MOSFETs relatively easily. It's rotated. You probably can't see the part number, but these are 2SK3569s. They are rated for 600 volts and 10 amps. So the closest alternative here I have in the lab is the IRFB 11 and 50, and these are rated for 500 volts and 11 amps. The maximum voltage is slightly less, but it should be just fine for this application, as the operating voltage is well within 500 volts. The maximum current rated is slightly higher compared to the 2SK3569, so in theory the replacement should be slightly better. The only issue is that now the tabs of these IRFB 11 and 50s are not insulated, whereas the original 2SK3569s are fully enclosed, and thus can be mounted on the heatsink directly. So I'll have to place a mica film between the MOSFETs and the heatsink. Alright, now I have put everything back together and also have changed the fuse, so now let's power it on. Aha, you can see that we powered it on, and let's turn the output on. And let's try to adjust the voltage. So it appears that everything is working. But just to be sure, let's put on a load and do a quick test. And for this quick test, I'm just going to draw one amp, using the electronic load, and you can see here we're measuring 150 volts, pretty much what the output is. So let's turn on the load. And by the way, I've already set it to draw 1 amp. So let's power it on. And you can see that we're drawing 1 amp, and here it's showing 1 amp as well. Everything seems to be working correctly. Now, because of the issue I had with the power supply, I wouldn't recommend using it close to the maximum power rating, as the heat dissipation may not be adequate, given the size of the heatsink. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this short repair video. If you liked it, please remember to give it a big thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more videos like this in the future.
Your participation makes videos like this possible. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.